Welcome to the Statistic in ED YouTube channel. Today I'd like to share with you my 10 favorite quotes about R programming. It's a video I have had in my mind for quite some time and now I finally get to do it. I really think this is a fun way of finding out more about R and maybe find some motivation and get inspired. Um, we'll talk about the R community, why we should use R, about some core ideas in R and best practices and in the end we'll even talk a little bit about literature and even poetry. So let's get started. The first quote is about why to use R. Um, so R stats come for the language, stay for the community. A quote by Colin Fay, who does an awful lot for the R community. He works for Think R in France. He's the creator and author of the Golem package and a book author also and an editor, one of the editors of the R Weekly newsletter and very active on Twitter, obviously. So I really like that quote and we'll stay with the R community for a moment. The second quote is one that I use in my introductory R courses and I always ask my students who they think this quote is from. R is the world's most powerful programming language for statistical computing, machine learning and graphics and has a thriving global community of users, developers and contributors. So I ask my students, if they think this is from rproject.org, rstudio, the R Foundation, or maybe Microsoft or Google or Yahoo. And it turns out it's in, indeed a quote by Microsoft. They have this MREN, Microsoft R Application Network, a website, and a Microsoft R Open software is published by Microsoft. The downside is that it's usually one or two versions behind the general R version that is published um, at rproject.org. But it has some enhancements, mostly performance related. I must admit that I haven't worked with Microsoft R Open yet. So if you have, and if you, if you have experience using that, I'd like to hear about your experiences and drop me a comment. We stay with the R community and saying the R community is, is great and very welcoming. Maybe this, this fits in quite well. It's by Jenny Bryan. If the first line of your R script is set working directory and then a very specific path, I will come into your office and set your computer on fire. Now, I don't know Jenny Bryan personally, but from what I get from what she does for the R community online, I think she's a very nice person, but here she really wanted to get a point across and I think it hits the, the nail on the head. Um, when I watched her presentation on YouTube, I really felt embarrassed because my scripts used to start with that line. You can imagine um, she teaches R, she gets a lot of scripts from her students and if the scripts start like this, she has to change this hard-coded hard file path before she can run the code. So that's not very convenient and I linked to a blog post here. So the idea is to avoid hard-coded file paths to use RStudio projects if you like. If you work in RStudio, um, then you can stick with relative file paths. You can copy your whole project to a different location and it will work out of the box. If you have to build up paths from folders and subfolders, maybe you can use the here package and still use relative file paths. So it's good practice to avoid hard-coded file paths. There's part two of this quote. It's the same idea, but a different line of code. If the first line of your R script is rm equals ls to remove all the objects in your global environment, Jenny Bryan will also come into your office and set your computer on fire. Um, obviously, it's not very nice to receive um, an email or a script on GitHub or somewhere else um, that you want to run to reproduce a code. Um, let's say the student says, my code produces an error on line 37 and you execute all the code up to that line to reproduce the error. And if that code nukes your global environment, you won't be very happy if you had been working on something else before. Um, but we can even go a little bit more into details. People use this line and think it's giving them a fresh start. And this is a misconception. Um, you get rid of all the objects in your global environment, but there are other aspects that um, influence how your code is executed most notably which packages you loaded before and removing all the objects from the global environment does not unload packages. So try to run code that uses the select function 
after using the mask package or uh, after loading the mask package or after loading the dplyr package, you will see that the code behaves differently. So the better practice is to really start a new R session, which means that packages are unloaded. You, then you really have a fresh start. Um, and you can do that using RStudio projects, for example, switching between projects or starting up a new project, and then you really have a fresh start. If you don't use RStudio, then just open a new R session. Right, now on to some core principles in R. This is a quote that I really like because it is very concise about key ideas in R by John Chambers, developer of S, that R is an implementation of and member of R core. Everything that exists is an object, everything that happens is a function call. And I think it's well worth looking a little bit into how literally we can take this quote. So there are two parts. Let's look at the first part. First, even functions are objects. We can see here in the code example, we create a simple function and we can access it like any other object. It has a class attribute. The internal type is closure, which means functions enclose their environment. And R even has some metaprogramming capabilities, so we can access the different parts of a function using R code. And we could also use this to manipulate function code with R code. So R is very flexible in that sense. Colin Fair said functions are first class citizens in R. Another quote that I didn't explicitly put in the presentation, but we see that functions are objects. About the second part of the quote, everything that happens is a function call. We can take that very literally, and I find that helpful, not in the code that I write day to day, but in understanding how R works internally, even unsuspecting operators like the plus operator or the power to operator um, are function calls behind the scenes. So we can rewrite that code that we are used to um, in this prefix form, starting with a function and then providing the parameters in parentheses. So here we would say apply the plus function to the parameters three and four um, with the power function, it's the same principle. And even the square bracket that is used for indexing in base R is a function call behind the scenes. So we can say use the function indexing on this data set and give me row one and column one. And it's the same as this notation that we may be more used to in base R. So everything that happens is a function call. Okay, we move on to functional programming. This is a quote again by Jenny Bryan that I really like. Of course, someone has to write loops. It doesn't have to be you. This touches a topic that is um, key to R, I think, how R works. Coming from other programming languages, people are often used to solving problems by writing loops. And of course you can do that in R, but it's not good practice. In many cases in R, explicit loops can be avoided. For example, we can use vectorized functions. I've made a video on that. Um, you can also use functions from the apply family of functions or from the per package, the map family of functions um, for cases where a vectorized function is not enough um, to rewrite your code to avoid a loop. So I plan to make a video on how you can avoid loops using LApply, for example. Also, Hadley Wickham's YouTube video about cupcakes is well worth watching. The techniques are not all up to date anymore, but the idea with the cupcakes is still um, worthwhile. So you can find that video on YouTube. Um, what he shows in the per package, some of that technique can now be done um, using the nest by function from the dplyr package. Right, we stay with functional programming and functions. You should consider writing a function whenever you've copied and pasted a block of code more than twice so that you now have three copies of the same code. This is a quote by Hadley Wickham and Gary Grolemont from the R for Data Science book. Um, I really like it, even though the numbers don't seem to be very accurate. If you've copied and pasted a block of code more than twice, you may end up with more than three copies. Um, but anyway, I think the idea comes across very well. So we want to avoid redundancy and whenever we have to make a change to our code, it's best practice to only make this change in one place and not in several places. Getting into this habit of writing functions and also using project-oriented workflows, like we said before with the Jenny Bryan quote, um, we can extend this idea. So 
we may write functions and then reuse the functions across different projects. And then we can use the same idea and say, whenever you find yourself reusing functions across projects, it's time to create your own package. I'm sure other people have said that. I haven't found a little quote about that, but I do have a quote about our packages. So let's have a look. It's by Sebastian Rochette, a colleague of Colin Fair at Think R in France in a blog post about our markdown and markdown driven development and creating R packages, he said, you're here because one day you wrote a line of code in the R language. Thus, trust me, you know enough to create a package. Creating R packages may sound like a very advanced topic, but it's not rocket science by any means. It's much easier than you may think if you haven't done it. And this quote may encourage you to do so, even if it may be just slightly exaggerated. But I have a playlist about creating R packages. You can check that out if you like. You can create your first package in RStudio in two minutes to get the basic idea. So it's really simple to get started. Right, and now on to literature. We have three literary quotes. One is from Leo Tolstoy. Happy families are all alike. Every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. You may wonder why this quote is presented in a video about R programming. Well, Hadley Wickham applied this idea to R programming and he said, tidy data sets are all alike, but every messy data set is messy in its own way. Um, a little anecdote about R. My first exposure to R was in the year 2007. I was working for a company and they sent me to a workshop about R a weekend and after the weekend I said I never want to open that software again and then it took me another seven years before I got back to R and I haven't looked back since and I don't want to miss it and the vast majority of my work is based on R. So what changed between 2007 and 2014? I think the Tidyverse collection of packages even if they weren't called Tidyverse in 2014 has really been a game changer. Before that people our users often had to convert between different object types. So in base R, it's common to have functions that want um, matrices or vectors or arrays or data frames or lists as inputs and also as outputs. So often to use several functions in combination, you had to convert back and forth between different object types. And the tidyverse collection of packages has this design principle of always having tidy data as input and tidy data as output. And I think this really has been a game changer in making working with R and data uh, much more convenient. So if you need to tame messy data, you can start out with a dplyr package. And then, for example, if you have messy string variables, you can use the string R package. And for all this reshaping work, the tidy R package is the way to go. Um, these packages are very well documented with lots of use cases, so you'll find ways of taming your untidy data. Right, and now it's time for some poetry. This is a bit more specific now about Markdown and Sharingen. By Klaus Ekström, when dollars appear, it's a sign that your code does not quite align. Ensure that your math in Sharingen have been placed on a single long line. Um, I'd also like to credit Yuri Shi, even if the quote is not by him, but I found it on his blog. So I'm really thankful for all the work he did in the R community with the knit R package and the books about Markdown and Bookdown and Blockdown and also the Sharingen package that this presentation is built on and lots of other things. But these are the main contributions that I um, recall the most. So check out his work. His blog is very worthwhile. There's a second and last um, quote for uh, second limerick and last quote for this presentation, also about sharing. And, um, so you need three dashes to separate slides here. Three dashes are used for a split, but careful when using your wit, because you must erase any sign of a space or else it will just look like dot dot dot. You won't get what you expected if you use spaces on the same line as the three dashes. So that's a bit more specific. Um, Anyway, I hope you found this presentation helpful. I'm really keen to know um, which quotes you find the most helpful and most inspiring, which maybe changed your way of thinking about R or your approach. Um, and which quotes did I miss? What are your favorite quotes? I'm really keen to hear what inspired you and how many more quotes I will learn about. So let me know in the comments 
all the best for your projects in R, for your data analysis, whatever you for whatever you do in R. Um, yeah, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel. Check out my other videos. All the best. See you next time. Ciao.